Hi, this is John Grant with the REI Policy Institute in Washington, D.C. I wanted to give a, kind of an overview, a brief overview, of our short sale uh, policy agenda for 2016. Now, this isn't our complete policy agenda. This right now just covers uh, short sale issues. Obviously, we had the Mortgage Forgiveness Debt Relief Act win late last year, so we're hoping that that opens up the market a bit. But there are a few issues that are still a concern to us. Um, among those, you know, the 20% cap on uh, short sale uh, profits, um, the just delays that take place, the holds that go on. And uh, during that hold period, um, we also see a lot of, uh, during that time, there are auctions that take place, which basically undercut the position of investors. Now, this cap and this, this hold, uh, these hold periods, really were designed, I think, to curb uh, fraud or suspected fraud. But what's interesting, you know, when FHFA, or FHA rather, lifted their seasoning period for a few years, they noted that, you know, all the benefits of not having that seasoning period during the housing crisis as it was unwinding, and there was really no reports of, of increased fraud that took place. So I think we have a pretty strong argument and, in fact, can use FHA's own words to talk about, you know, the relationship or rather the lack of relationship between uh, fraud and the timing of a sale or the uh, profit that's made. Now, you know, there are studies, of course, that exist that, that do link the two, but it's usually for a pretty short duration and for a pretty high, uh, you know, sale price where fraud, you know, becomes suspected. You know, I think that, that uh, as you look at some of these studies that are put out, you see, you know, 45-day uh, uh, periods with, you know, 15% profit, and they're still labeled suspicious. And, you know, I'm not sure uh, there's a lot of evidence to that. And, and moreover, I don't know what suspicious means. Um, this seems like a rather black or white issue. Either fraud took place or it did not take place. Um, so those are a few issues we're going to look at. Another issue that I definitely want to take a look at is valuation methodology. You know, under the standard short sale program, when they va the valuation methodology moved beyond BPO, and it's supposed to take into account what's happening in the community and, and you know, other comp prices, you know, and, and more reasonable comps. Um, I'm not sure that's really taking place, even though it's on the books that it's supposed to. So that's something we absolutely want to look at. We also want to look at the role of uh, hedge, you know, large institutional investors and their impact on short sales or the lack of short sales. Um, in at least some of my discussions with investors, they seem to favor uh, just folks going to foreclosure. So one of the things that we'll talk to government officials about will be, you know, the value of short sales and the fact that they should be on the table as an option and whether or not they're being presented as an option to these folks. So the message here today is that we do have a number of policy issues under the short sale uh, umbrella. There are others in other areas, REOs and, and broader issues like housing finance reform. But the message with all of these issues is that in terms of lobbying, we can really start playing offense a bit. And that, you know, a good lobbying program makes your business and the industry more profitable. So that's why it's important to support a long-term sustained lobbying effort. Um, as I've said many times, and we'll say many times in the future, this isn't a quick fix. These are tough battles that are fought. There's always opposition on, on any side that you take on an issue. But I, I want to encourage investors to really start looking at this as a valuable investment in their real estate business, both uh, the subscription that we have to a newsletter, which is only $99 a year, 
And then those who want to sit on the uh, leadership council that we're currently developing, which I think is, is maybe 5,000 uh, a year. Um, so I want to thank you for your time. That's a glimpse into at least one area of policy that we're going to look at. And we should have more updates and other policy issues uh, in the coming weeks. Thank you.